It's talking about Jesus Christ. A child is born. What joy we have that Jesus Christ the Savior, that Jesus Christ the healer, that Jesus Christ the redeemer, that Jesus Christ the sanctifier that makes us holy. Jesus Christ, the power of God in man. A child is born. Unto us, a son is given. That's the son of God. That's the son of man. He came from heaven, son of God. He came to earth, son of man. So that he can make the sons of men to become the sons of God. He came from on high. He came down below on earth. So that earthly people can become heavenly people. So that the weak children of men can become the strong children of God. So that the, down, the downtrodden and the weak and the fleshly can become spiritual. So that those who are born of the flesh will now be born of the spirit. In short, so that a transformation, a change will happen in every life. Unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. And then it says, the government shall be upon a shoulder. It's a ruler. He comes to reign. And when you receive him, you receive the ruler that reigns in your life. And when he reigns in your life, every other power will crumble and come down. When Christ, the one that comes to govern, when he comes to reign in your life, and the government of your life, the control of your life, the leadership of your life comes upon his shoulder. He even makes you a ruler yourself. All the things that ruled against your life, over your life before, he throws them away, and then you rule over them in Jesus' name. And the government shall be upon his shoulder. His name shall be called Wonderful. Counselor. Mighty God, the God that is able to do all things. Mighty to save. Mighty to heal. Mighty to deliver. Mighty to sanctify and purify. Mighty to empower you so that you will have the victory in every area of your life. The mighty God, the everlasting Father. Everlasting. He takes you from earth and he takes you to eternity. The peace he gives you tonight. From earth to eternity. The purity, the holiness of life, he gives you tonight from earth to eternity. The strength and the power that he gives you tonight, the might and the wonders that he gives you tonight from earth to eternity. And then he says, the Prince of Peace. Look at verse 7. In verse 7, he tells us of, his, of the increase of his kingdom. 
Uh, when you come to Christ, and the control of your life is given to Christ. When you come to Christ, and the government of your life is in Christ's hand. That government of your life will continue to increase and increase. Its control over your life will continue to increase and increase. Its power in your life. I understand the choir that is supposed to sing. They're still on their way. But because this program is a global program, and all the leaders and all the workers and ministers and uh, all the people who are participating, the professionals, in all the countries of the world, they are ready for this time. We love the choir coming to sing, but we cannot wait. They'll have their chance the other days of the program. It may not be their fault that they are not here now, but we love them, we bless everyone, and the administration, the Lord will use to bring uh, to bless us during this program in Jesus' name. And for those of you who are here, we praise the Lord for you. The Lord is going to turn your life and family and ministry around for the better in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for this moment. We bless your name for who you are. You have chosen us. You brought us into the ministry. And you want us to succeed. I pray that you empower every participant to succeed in ministry in Jesus' name. Equip everyone. Empower everyone. Engage everyone in the ministry of the word that will bring souls into the kingdom in Jesus' name. We know you have answered. It will be done. And we'll see the evidence in every life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Until hear a good, good amen. amen. God bless everyone. You can sit down. As we begin our ministers and professional conference this time, And we're talking about the desire of God, the decision of God, the decree of God to empower, energize, equip every minister for wonders in ministry. Yes, reveal this mind to us. What he wants for you. What he wants for me. And I pray this revelation as we review it again will be fulfilled in your life and fulfilled in every life. We're looking at 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9. And you said unto me, my grace is sufficient for thee. My grace is sufficient for thee. That's the Lord Almighty. The God of power, the God of all possibilities. Talking to Paul the Apostle. A minister like you, like me. There were difficulties in the way. There were challenges in the way. And there were things that could have made him stop. 
Things that could have turned him around. Things could have made him say, it's enough. I can't bear that anymore. I can't move on anymore. He actually prayed about it. And there, there, was, there were challenges buffeting him. Whatever the challenges were, they were so big and so great and so traumatizing that he had to go to God in prayer and say, this is painful. This is pressurizing. This is not convenient or comfortable. He prayed once, no answer. The buffeting still continued. The challenges still continued. And the difficulties still continued. He prayed the second time. No change, no answer, no ease of the situation. And he prayed the third time. And now God answered. And the answer was not to take away the buffeting. Whenever we pray for a problem to be removed, the Lord answers in two ways. Number one, He can remove the mountain, the load, and the pressure. That's one way to answer. Number two, the second way to answer is to strengthen our shoulder to bear the body. Number two, it is to strengthen our backbone to be stronger so we can bear the load and carry the load. Number two, it is to strengthen our mind so that we have the courage of mind and we have the ability to take whatever blow may be coming. And so God answered the prayer of Paul by strengthening his shoulder to bear the load. Strengthening the backbone to stand in the midst of the challenges. Making the mind strong, courageous, most uh, stronger than the buffeting coming upon him. And so this is the answer of the Lord that we are reading from God to Paul the Apostle. He says, my grace is sufficient for thee. There is salvation. My grace is sufficient for your salvation. There is sanctification and holiness. My grace is sufficient no matter your temptation, no matter the environment where you live. My grace is sufficient for your, say, for your sanctification and holiness. When the wind is blowing this way and that way, and all the trees of the field that wave in this way and that way. And the strong people are collapsing. My grace is sufficient for steadfastness. That in the midst of the wind, in the midst of the whirlwind, God answers and he says, my grace is sufficient for steadfastness. In his service, the Lord has called us to. When the demand of the service is greater than our former strength. And he will say this thing is much more than I ever thought. The pebbles and the way are turning to thorns in the way. 
the slope the uh, the climbing is a kind of steep more steep i was than i was prepared for and then we pray about it it says my grace is sufficient for your service therefore the grace of god is available Wherever we are and whatever we are called to do, my grace is sufficient for thee, and my strength is made perfect in weakness. And then Paul stopped praying about the buffeting. He said, Now I expect it. Now, I don't just endure, I enjoy it. God knows about it. I know about it. We both know about it. Heaven knows about it. Earth knows about it. I'm all right. And then he accepted that, he expected that, he enjoyed that. That's why he now says, most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Look at verse 10. In verse 10, it says, therefore, because of what God has said, Therefore, because his grace is sufficient for me, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in criticism, in the problems of those who reproach me. It says, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distresses, for Christ's sake, for Christ's sake, for when I am weak, then am I strong. It says, when the thing that should weaken me, when they come to me, I become stronger. When the things that drove other people away from ministry and they give up and they stop and they say, I can't continue. The body is too much. The contradictions are too many. It says they are weak, therefore they quit. But because of what God told me, when I am weak, I don't quit. I continue. Actually, now, become strengthened by the things that should weaken me. He said, for when I am weak, then at the same time, am I strong? It means what things on earth come to weaken me, heaven responds and pours blessing upon my life that heaven makes me strong. What was the secret? How did he do this? The strength came. Power came. Grace was multiplied at the time when it should have been so weak, in, it should have dropped the ball. Ephesians chapter 6, I'm reading from verse 10. It says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord. Psychology will not make it. 
earthly help will not make it. Human promise will not make it. Dependence on man or woman, dependence on the flesh will not make it. It's the strength in the Lord. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. In verse 11, it says, put on the whole armor of God. The armor of man will not make it. You can have the greatest encouragement on earth that will not make it. You can have a human coach that coaches other people in secular matters to coach you that will not make it. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. That's the secret. You get the secret today. You rely on the God of heaven. You will be strong. To the month, be amen. We will be strong in Jesus' name. I'm talking to you today on making the weak strong in ministry. Making the weak strong. Are you weak? That's not a strange thing. You're a human being doing heavenly things. You'll be weak. Your spirit, soul, and body, flesh, and spirit, and you are confronting Satan, who is diabolical and spiritual. We understand you're weak. Your body is not stone. Your mind is not stone. Your endurance is limited. You are weak. Moses was weak. But he finished strong. Elijah was weak. But he finished strong. Gideon expressed his weakness. But he overcame. And then you come to the New Testament. And Paul the Apostle said, Fightings without and fears within. They were weak. Peter was weak. And he said, I don't know the man. And yet heaven smiled on all of them and he finished strong. Whatever your weakness, whatever your difficulty, from today, power, strength, authority. If you can look away from the past, don't borrow the experience of the past to fetch you plan the future. We human beings are agents and carriers of history. And we allow history to destroy prophecy. We allow the past to spoil the future. We borrow the tears of the past and we send that ahead so that when I get to that place again, I will cry again. We borrow the failure of the past to spoil the success of the future. That's why God said, remember not the former things. 
the former fears, the former weakness, the former crumbling and falling, the former backsliding, the former giving up. Forget the former things. He says, I will do a new thing. Forget the past. Don't borrow the past to plan the future. They were all weak, but they finished strong. I will finish strong. Let heaven hear your voice. Let God hear your voice. That you are not trusting your human strength. You are trusting in divine power. Put on the whole armor of God. Now I understand. When I failed in the past, I didn't have on the whole armor of God. If you were defeated in the past, I know the secret. You didn't put on the whole armor of God. If situations or circumstances put your back on the ground in the past, you are not put.